Hello, well, I've always liked the idea of making my own shoes. And so that's what I'm going to start doing. Go on this weird journey of seeing if I can make a pair of shoes. And the first thing you need, ideally, if you're going to make some shoes, is uh, some sort of form to mould the shoes over. And it's called a last. So I have got a couple of wooden blocks here. I've been gluing countertops together. So I'm a bit short on wood and I'm going to shape these to form a couple of lasts. There'll be a left and a right and they'll be slightly longer than my feet and the toes to give me a bit of expansion room. There's a whole sort of world of shoemaking and I've been reading books on it and the more I read the more I think there is to it. So I guess if you're a professional shoemaker or experienced shoemaker you're probably going to cringe at some of the things I'm going to be doing because I'm on this journey I don't really know if I'm honest what I'm doing <laughs> it makes a change perhaps it doesn't um, but I've been reading up a lot so I want to try and get into it I feel shoemaking is a bit of a hidden art to me and you can go on expensive courses obviously and I'm sure they're extremely good but I like to learn by trying and making mistakes myself as you've probably seen in some of my earlier videos anyway so I've been reading around the subject I've found some pretty good books which seem to help so some of these are like old reprints of old books and I've been reading these trying to understand all the sort of ins and outs of shoemaking and then one with nice illustrations in it and then I've been watching quite a few videos on YouTube as well, which have been very, very helpful. So going to give it a go today, cutting out the lasts. I'll show you my diagrams as I've been making a few little sketches to help get the measurements for these lasts. What I've essentially done is I've tried both sitting and standing and drawing around my feet with like a pencil going around and getting the shape of my feet. You'll find when you're standing, your feet spread a bit more than when you're sitting. So I tended to go more by my standing and I've got a, a left and a right foot here. So done each of my feet. My feet are actually very slightly different in length, which I think is probably not uncommon. You need to make an addition in the length of your last for your feet. Um, so they can see so your toes can stretch out and move as they're walking. So I found the information on this became either very technical or rather limited, but essentially you need to add something. I've added about 1.5 centimeters, roughly half an inch into the length of my shoes. What I have done, and I'll show you this on a separate video, I have deconstructed a shoe that fits me uh, fits very well and um, I've got this like the internal lengths and I've been cross-checking to make sure that I've got things roughly matching up with an actual live shoe so um, I'll explain a bit more about that in another video I think so that's how I got the length the width it seems there are some fairly standard ways of measuring you measure um, around your foot in your instep you measure across your like your toe knuckles the metatarsals as they call them and you also do a, like a measurement from the bottom back of your ankle up to the sort of top of your foot there are lots of videos on youtube about bespoke foot measuring which are worth watching if you really want to get into this so i've got some key measurements and then what i've done is i've obviously got this outline I will transfer this onto the wooden blocks. What I've also got is like my side profile outline. So the sort of key things I found with this is most shoes seem to have what they call a toe lift. And again, it depends on the type of shoe, how much lift you have. I'm going to go for 10 millimeters, about half an inch roughly. And then assuming you're having a heel which i am i've allowed 15 millimeters just over half inch five eighths i guess for the heel so my sole is shaped like that 
I've tried to sort of take account of the height of my toes, height of my ankle bones, etc., to get this profile for the last. And one of the things I found quite useful, I notice only one of the pros using it is one of these devices. Um, usually you associate these with trying to tile around central heating pipes and such, but you can get quite an accurate profile of your foot at different heights. And this is one of the extra long ones where they come in two sort of blade lengths, but this is the extra long. So you can get the depth of your foot quite well in there. So I found this quite useful for checking some of my measurements. That's um, a contour finder or whatever you call it, edge finder. Quite useful little gadget. So I think I'm ready to do a rough cut on my lasts. As I say, throughout I've got this pair of shoes which have been cannibalised. I got these for £4 off of eBay. They were rather gone on the sole, but they're fine for what I'm wanting to do. And it gives me all the sort of shapes to check against my foot and the last. So I'll get on with some cutting out. Actually, just before I do do that, it's probably quite good to show on here the key measurement areas I was talking about. So across your toe bones, your metatarsals, is a measurement about there. Across your instep, it's roughly there. <laughs> something like there and then the one going back to your ankle and back of your heel is that measurement there so those are the sorts of measurements in blue the three primary measurements that I've taken around my feet so I think if you have those you have your foot length and then you make allowances for your heel and toe etc I'm hoping that will get me roughly on the the right track. As I say, all of this is a learning, so time will tell whether or not I've done it right. But that's part of the learning and the interest. Well, I've just cut my patterns out and I'm just going to mark them ready for the sawing. As I say, most sane people would just go and buy some shoe lasts and I should probably be doing that as it's my first pair, but I'm rightly or wrongly someone who likes to try each process. Last, it's quite interesting when you look into the history of last making because nowadays there are very few people who would make lasts from blocks like this and they're cut by machine. So if, if they're wooden ones, if they're plastic, they're obviously just sort of injection molded or whatever, but the wooden ones, they have copying machines to make them. So you can send off your key measurements and get some wooden lasts made for you and they basically will copy a particular size of last and then adapt it so it's like additive methods where you stick leather on a you know say a size nine and a half standard last to make it fit a particular person or there's a subtractive where you file away and take material off of your last to make it fit going back in history they didn't have left and right lasts, they would have just had a shoe last and then adapted it. But as one's got more sophisticated, um, the copying machines came in and they were able, when they were copying things like rifle stocks on copying machines, they then were able to make shoe lasts and you could turn out you know, each of the shoe sizes on a copying machine. So that's my rough outlines. I'll go on the bandsaw and trim those round. Well, I've got my bandsaw set up with a fairly thin blade to get round these curves. So I'll set two. So I have a right and a left now. So I've marked in some toe lift, which I've done at a centimetre. And then the heel lift going back, I've got marked at the halfway mark at about a centimetre then at the heel itself at about 15 millimetres. So I now have a, a couple of sole shapes and very crudely a couple of foot shapes. I need to do some more work now on getting it slimmed off.
I've now sort of marked in the area to cut away for the toe. So the toes are here and so I'm going to cut away this. Ideally this last will be a bit deeper. I also need to do a slight dig in just here as well for the, sort of like the shape of the shoe. So to get this line I've been sort of measuring both my feet and an existing pair of shoes to get an idea of where this line goes. It is all a bit hit and miss which does <laughs> worry me but I will carry on. I realised I needed a bit more height so I'm just gluing on a bit more wood which I'll then trim around so they're both getting like another three quarters of an inch extension on there. So I built up the height of these lasts with the pine add-ons here. Actually it's large, <laughs> large add-ons and I'm at the moment sort of drawing on where I think the shoelaces go and I'm marking out where I can take more wood um, off. It's all, to be honest, it's quite difficult. I'm looking at pictures of last, so in this book I have some pictures. I'm looking at old shoes to try and work out the shape. And I'm looking at my feet and taking lots of measurements. So I'll carry on. It's um, one of those things where you just, I think, just have to have the courage to keep going. I'm sort of feeling, oh gosh, I don't really know what I'm doing, a bit out of my depth. But, you know, I'm using this thing as well, which is helping a bit. But yeah, I will carry on and see what happens. I'll show you a couple of tools I've been using. Because I've been using something called an Arbotec to get some of the surface down. So this is the Arbotec and it's quite an effective tool if you need to get rid of quite a lot of wood quickly. And it's basically like a very vicious saw blade is an angle grinder. So um, there we are. A-R-B-O... R T E C H Arbotech and they're pretty vicious things so it comes with this shield and you can adjust your cut of depth here so you can make it more aggressive less aggressive there's a lever on that side for making it go in or out more but it's a good tool for quick removal it's very good actually for Windsor chair seats if ever you need to hollow out a Windsor chair seat, highly effective. And then I've been using an 80 grit in this belt sander, which again is quite a quick way of getting some material off at speed. I think ideally I'd have a pair of shoemakers lasts to actually look at. It would make it a lot easier doing all of this, but hey, you know, this is all learning and I'm sort of beginning to understand the sort of slight offsets of each foot. Um, at the way shoes are done, the way they go in underneath here and the way it's slightly flatter that side, more raised this side, the way this isn't central. So all these sort of geometry points, by doing something like this, I am learning a heck of a lot along the way. Maybe get out of lockdown, I could put to a proper shoemaking course and learn the correct way, but I reckon I would have learned a heck of a lot trying all of this. I've been doing a bit of sort of research online and I notice you can provide your measurements and then have your lasts made up by a CNC, CAD type engineer and they'll automatically take those measurements, put them into a computer and make you some lasts. Well my son is a bit of a joke, uh, did the same thing but in miniature. So he took some feet measurements and hopefully you can just see that there. He made this little last scale down. Uh, did it using Fusion 360 and imported the data into Fusion 360 and machined up this, which is rather clever. So quite good fun uh, seeing what you can do. And obviously you could ramp that up into a larger size thing. Anyway, I'll carry on with my analog method. Gonna take a bit off the sides. I'm not very keen on the Arbotec from the point of view it's quite noisy and dusty. Um, eye protection is obviously essential as is hearing protection. <laughs> anyway, I'll get going.
Well, I've done a bit more slimming down now, and I think I really have probably got these down as much as I need to get them. Well, there you have it, two completed shoe lasts. Time will tell whether I got the sizing right or not. What I did in the end, I did a saw cut down here, across and then down again, so there's a screw through the centre there that holds the two halves together. And then once one's made the shoe, one can undo that screw, pull the heel out, and I put a hole through here for a bit of string to facilitate pulling. And ditto on the front here, there's a hole for the string to facilitate pulling that out. But it does in effect break in half, which is what I'm going to need to do. I may need to just line this joint with a little bit of leather for the thickness of the saw cut, but it's same idea, screw in there, going right the way through, and it holds it quite well. But yeah, <laughs> I have my shoe lasts. So, a bit nuts. Should have just bought some probably, but it's quite interesting. You learn a lot by trying something like this. I now appreciate the different parts of the foot and how it differs and you get a feel for it all. Quite important, I think. <laughs> anyway, we'll see how I get on with some actual shoe making. And that will be another video at some point. OK, then. Thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye then.